Thank you so much. Uh, student retention is a daily topic on my, on my desk too, and on Archimedes Foundation and the university's desk. So we were thinking for, for a pretty long time with Marion and uh, Marion's colleagues, like who to invite here? Who would be the equivalent stakeholders where we could really learn fr from? And uh, we found two fantastic cities from Europe, and we found one fantastic uh, recognized company uh, who has been voted as the best uh, company giving the practice uh, and placements for students in 2018 in, and internships for foreign students, exactly. So, in front of us, first of all, I would, rec I would uh, introduce uh, uh, Ms. Teda Minte. She's, from, she's the head of Science City Hannover from the city on, of Hannover Lord Mayor's office and Hannover is in Germany. Uh, on applause, please. Tere? Tere. Tere. Yeah. And uh, compared to other guests, you are fr from very far away. You are from Germany. Thank you very much. The second uh, <laughs> guest who we have is uh, Mari Taverne. Mari is the head of talent attraction and migration in the city of Tampere, Finland. Applause. And third guest is uh, from here, from Tallinn, from Estonia, and uh, Katri Kuse is the head of human resources from Ericsson, Estonia. So we are talking about basically the student retention measures, and we go to the company level and then the local government level, which would be very interesting. We have very much to learn uh, from you. And the first part is that we discussed that you would give each one of you would give a short presentation about uh, so to give, give an introduction uh, to the topic and you would be focusing on the topic what has motivated you to focus systematically on the student retention and you would also talk a bit about the, uh, the student retention organization in your city or in your company. But yes, one by one, Teda, the floor mm -hmm. is yours, you will start. Okay, well I've brought some pictures because it's easier to listen if you have something to look at. Okay, yeah, um, well you heard already something about uh, facts and figures, uh, I want to give you some more. Um, as you see in, in Hanover we have a huge, um, uh, no, you can't really read it, uh, what a huge um, uh, community of uh, Chinese students studying, uh, so this is really the biggest uh, group we have, um, followed by um, Tunisia, Iran, Syria, Vietnam, so it's much different uh, to the situation here in the Baltic area. Um, I want to try, since Norma already said something about the legislation and um, uh, the residence permit, uh, Germany actually is one of the, the countries where you can stay 18 months after your uh, graduation, which is uh, quite good. And, um, and uh, this has a reason, because uh, the Bertelsmann Foundation, one of the biggest foundations we have, just published, published a few weeks ago uh, figures saying that we need per year 260 60,000 migrants and that uh, for the next 10 or 15 years. So that shows you um, the economical pressure um, to engage for uh, the, uh, yeah, the reten retention of um, uh, international students. Um, I have one statistic which is not so fresh, it's five years old, but I think it's uh, still valuable and it might inter interest you. As um, students coming from abroad were asked, uh, what are you re the reasons why you choose a certain certain country for studying and of course uh, the, the first answer was uh, the, the um, quality of the study and the recognition of the degree but then at least on the second pl sixth place it says uh, the chance of working after the degree and it said that 70% of the interviews uh, said that so that's quite interesting maybe also the same situation uh, here with your states. Um, 
Yeah, I will skip that to change to, to save time. Um, six guidelines I have. The first guideline is um, how do we um, work in, in Hanover? Actually, uh, all what we do is a political initiative top down. And uh, our experience is you, if you really want to engage for international students to, to stay in your country, you have to write it down in your urban development plans. And you don't have to write it down alone. You have to organize and establish something like an alliance. In Hanover, it's called Hanover Skilled Workers Alliance. And we have lots of very important and powerful people uh, working and joining this alliance. Like, of course, the city of Hanover, where I come from, but also the region of Hanover, the Employment Agency of Hanover is very important, uh, Employees Association, yes, even them, uh, Chambers of Craft, Chambers of Industry and Craft, the Labour Union, uh, the Regional Economy Development, the Job Centre, and even the Student Service Union, and there are lot, quite a lot of um, civil society um, initiatives working for welcoming students. So they, they all build up the alliance in Hanover, and uh, we tried to be um, very concrete in the things we wanted to do. So we said it's not just uh, important to write down in the urban development plan, yes, we want to do it. We have to, write, to, to develop the measures. And it's also very good to develop the measures with, within a big alliance. So um, we, we actually published or worked together on an act action plan. We took one and a half year, we took our time to do it. All nine universities, the city of Hanover and many of the partners I just mentioned. Uh, and we worked in different fields, in the fields of housing, study finances, integration, anti-discrimination, which is important. And also we had this perspective to work and stay in Hanover. And finally, since it was 2016, how to uh, help help uh, refugees uh, to get an access uh, to our universities. So um, in the end we had 64 measures and I just want to introduce uh, to you some of the measures in the field of work and stay in Hanover. And uh, they resemble quite um, the different actions Norma already uh, referred to. Uh, we have counselings, we have workshops. Uh, we do them together uh, with uh, companies like Sennheiser, so maybe this mic is from Sennheiser too. Uh, Volkswagen, you know, maybe you have figured out they have uh, tyres uh, on your car from Continental. They actually, uh, their home uh, location is Hanover. So they all support uh, these workshops uh, and they, uh, yeah, and we offer these workshops uh, twice a year for the international students. Uh, what proved to be very good, at least we think it's good, well, let's see if the students uh, think it too, is something like um, a, a roadmap working in Hanover. And this roadmap um, really describes the different different ways where to, to start, how to write your CV, where to get counseling for internship, and to show the international students to, to find a job, you need more than just do your graduation and then step out and ask for a job. You have to start early already in your study, and that is uh, what this leaflet is helping about. And uh, yeah, I think it's quite successful. And then we have counseling by the Economic Development Agency, and we have videos showing how you are allowed to job during your studies, and these jobs might help to establish a network which helps you on uh, in the future. Um, the last thing I want to focus on is the local acceptance. Uh, well, I know you had elections uh, in uh, Estonia, and F ECRE is uh, becoming quite big. They did the, well, yeah. Yeah? Yes. yes uh, well, we have the same problem in Germany. It's called RFD, and uh, we see the same problem, I think, in Finland and everywhere else. So the people uh, who are, have not so much education and are, have, are afraid of change, um, they make an attitude against uh, migrants. And so if you work for students, international students, you have to think about that and, and also establish, design a campaign. Uh, we did a campaign for private housing because Hanover actually has a lot of uh, landlords, private landlords. 80% of the landlords are private ones, uh, teachers or those who can afford a second flat and lend it. And so we had this campaign. It was quite fruitful saying, don't let us stay alone in the rain. Uh, and uh, we had um, the House Owner Association supporting it. And we have uh, the Student Service Union giving 
for free charge uh, the agents work uh, bringing them together so that's important also career days and movies about international days uh, because uh, only that guarantees that the people yeah well you have to work on the acceptance otherwise it would it wouldn't work so i stop here and the last charge is about the question what is challenging i leave that uh, to later on discussions and pass on to you thank you thank you so much that was very quick and uh, five minutes very, you said oh, i nice can talk more if you want <laughs> we will go on with you okay <laughs> thank you let's make an applause for teda And Mari will go on. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, uh, well, I would like to emphasize that the city of Tampere has been doing uh, very uh, forecasting work uh, since uh, 2012 or so in, in terms of talent attraction uh, issues. These issues have been considered uh, to be involved with the economic development growth of the city for, for this for almost a decade already. So, uh, but now on my presentation, I will narrow it down to the international student part since that's the subject today. Uh, so my position in the, in the city of Tampere, I'm in charge of the migration and talent attraction issues. Uh, and actually this is like the first position like this uh, in Finland, which, is like, uh, which, which, which shows that the city of Tampere puts a lot of emphasis to the talent attraction part also, and that, that the migration is ac actually part of the economic development program. So in Tampere, we, we have three universities which have emerged together uh, this year, actually the beginning of this year. We have the technical university part, human science part, and uh, also the uh, applied sciences school. Uh, about uh, 20 to 40 percent of the international students state that they leave after their first year of graduation from Finland and uh, from Tampere as well. And this is a huge loss for the city. So we have been thinking of how can we retain these people and also to utilize more this kind of potential that these international students represent to us. Uh, in numbers and in figures, we have about 2,000 to 3,000 international students studying each year in Tampere. And, uh, and in 2017, Finnish universities uh, have applied the tuition fees, actually. Uh, this hasn't uh, decreased a lot uh, the amount of students applying from non-use uh, countries to, to the universities in Tampere, uh, even though that we have now the tuition fee. This, this shows that we are still attractive for internationals. Uh, but still, students report that uh, they have difficulties to create career paths after their graduation from our universities. And uh, this is something that we want to also uh, facilitate uh, in the city's uh, employment department as well to engage companies and international students more easily on that uh, particular phase than when they are graduating. So Tampere is taking big steps to re uh, restructure the international student retention policies between different stakeholders. So I want to emphasize that we are not doing this together. It's a matter of the universities, it's a matter of the city, it's a matter also of the governmental services that, for example, our employment services uh, offer in different cities in Finland. Also, for example, Chamber of Commerce is a very big partner in our uh, strategic work. So first of all, the city of Tampere is building a strategic program which is based on the city strategy. Uh, and also, uh, you heard uh, before this presentation about the Talent Boost program, which is under the Ministry of Economic Affairs and Employment. So. Uh, 
uh, our city, I'm quite proud to say that it's the first one who is creating this kind of strategic program, which is a cross-cutting program also uh, and regarding the uh, migration and talent attraction issues. The second part is that we are building uh, international talent hub to Tampere, which is uh, which is um, uh, international talent and migration ecosystem. It's a permanent one-stop shop, so to say, for companies who are looking for uh, talented workforce and for internationals or international students who want to create their career paths in Tampere. We are creating a fast-track program for international students uh, in order to facilitate uh, their uh, career paths uh, after their graduation. This includes, for example, scholarship programs with uh, different companies. Uh, of course, the students, uh, when they apply to our universities, they can apply for the scholarship program, but these programs can in include as well uh, job positions for summer jobs or practical training places. So this is for the retention part, but also to attract these students, because these students can have, uh, they might apply also to Helsinki universities uh, or other cities in Finland or maybe in Sweden. So the, uh, about the funding, where does the funding come from? We are quite lucky in Finland at the moment that the Minister of Economic Affairs and Employment is funding uh, these different measures by project funding money. Uh, also, our city is putting effort also in the funding side, but also our universities have be become a big stakeholder in order to, to fund these actions. But to end my presentation, I want to emphasize the collaboration that we do on the local level. It's not the same thing uh, in, the sa uh, in the different cities in Finland, uh, but the collaboration is the key to create uh, a strong career paths from the beginning of the students when they come to Finland to the uh, path to employment. Thank you. Thank you. Patri. Good afternoon uh, from my side as well. I'm uh, representing the employers here and uh, can do some examples how we work uh, at Ericsson with uh, students, uh, especially with foreign students. Ericsson is a global company and around the world we have uh, almost uh, 100,000 employees. And here uh, at Estonia we have uh, more than 2,000 employees. And every year we are taking around 100 interns uh, and 50% of these 100 is uh, foreign students. So by that we got uh, 2018 nominated as uh, the best uh, internship uh, program for a foreign students uh, company. And of course this uh, makes me proud, but why we are doing this? There is a really simple uh, logic behind, because uh, first we are lacking uh, workforce here in Estonia, we are lacking uh, skilled workforce, uh, meaning uh, engineers, uh, software developers, uh, solution architects, uh, but also logisticians and the supply chain people. And uh, I'm personally and our company is really thankful that we have the possibility that we have the foreign students next to Estonian students as well here in Estonia. And, uh, being a global company, it's quite easy for us to take the foreign students because our company language is English. And uh, currently we are having 47 different nationalities already working in-house. So there is really good uh, chance or possibility that if you are from different country, you still can meet someone from your country. And then you can speak your native language as well next to the English. But uh, what this gives to the company to have different uh, diversity, background people or, or different nationalities, it gives the innovation that we all are looking. But if the people are coming from the same, same neighborhood uh, and doing the same things and thinking the same way, and we don't have different backgrounds or cultural understandings, then 
I don't believe that there will be so big innovation. We need to see the things from different sides. For example, if, if there is a two people and uh, in the middle there is uh, number six, then one people, person is seeing a six and other people is seeing the nine. So which one has the right? So if they start to discuss who has the right, there comes the new ideas and the both are the, on the winning position. So. Uh, I'm, I'm really happy uh, that, um, that we have this collaboration with uh, especially uh, Taltec, uh, our previous technical university, and we are tightly cooperating with them, uh, supporting with um, uh, guest lectures on the university where we are introducing what we are doing, what kind of uh, uh, skills we need to have for the new, uh, new employees or, or, or students who are coming uh, first for internship and afterwards we are hoping that they will stay to work. And another bonus is that if we are hiring already the foreign students as employees, they already get, if they get this uh, degree from Estonia, they immediately get the work and living permission for uh, five years here in Estonia. And this saves a lot of money for empl employer to support all these um, uh, bureaucratic uh, work and living permits. So by that, um, I... I uh, Listening to the two previous speakers, then I, I'm really happy that uh, uh, the governments uh, in different countries are supporting and, and working uh, to, um, to get the foreign students in and then also uh, starts to seek the contacts uh, with, uh, with the companies who afterwards would like to recruit them. This is, uh, from, from my perspective, this is really good and, and uh, supports us. But of course, same time, here being here, Estonia, Finland and Germany, we all are competitors for those students as well. So, thank you for now. Thanks for the last positive note. <laughs> that yes, all these talent attractions, the whole world is Let's forget currently. Europe, but the whole world is competing. And uh, there are lots of developments, like every month happening in all kinds of countries. Big, starting from study migration, ending up with work migration. Uh, thank you so much. I have the next question to you, which is a very simple question. Which kind, what is the typical student profile you have or you are dealing with? What are the most preferred uh, uh, study fields? What the students have graduated, which fields? Uh, that and these students who would find the work easier than the others. Wh whoever wants, you can start. Maybe from Katri. Which, uh, what, so I, I understand Tallinn University of Technology, so you most likely you have engineers there. But any other fields? We have, like I said, uh, the main field uh, is uh, technology or engineering part, but uh, also logistics uh, people, uh, supply chain people, uh, production planners, uh, transport organizers, um, but uh, from, from soft skills side, uh, I, I think if the company is in English uh, speaking environment, then it's no difference. Then can be also like environmental specialists, also in uh, HR department is possible to work, it, it's no issue. And we have had also foreign HR intern as well. Unfortunately, he didn't uh, stay to Estonia, but uh, but uh, still, it, it's possible, but mainly uh, is the technology field. Uh, but, uh, what I see is, is easy to adapt uh, because uh, uh, it somehow feels so that, uh, that these technology field companies, they are more advanced in, in uh, this English environment uh, at work, and then we don't have this language barrier. Marie? Yeah, uh, well, of course, the Technical University in Tampere is attracting a lot of uh, students on the English-speaking uh, study programs, uh, and those have the uh, better uh, employment rates, of course. Uh, our uh, company structure is heavily, uh, heavily also in technical side, 
uh, we are export driven uh, region as well so so those uh, skilled workforce who come from the technical side are more easily employed to our companies uh, but uh, for example our IB program international business program in the appliance sciences is attracting a lot of international students but we have noticed also that those students are not uh, so well employed that well, of course, the Finnish students are, uh, which is a huge loss for us. Um, and also, it depends on the origin country of those students. We attract a lot of uh, students, uh, non-EU students, to Tampere, and it depends uh, really on the origin country, how can we see of the career path, how, how does that develop later on, and that's that's something that we can't find a solution quite easily or rapidly. It's, it's also a question of the society and the structure of the society, how we, we are open, how our work market is open for people from different origin. Thanks, Mari. Teda? Yeah, in, in Hanover, the majority of foreign students study the typical STEM faculties. Um, especially uh, mechanical uh, engineering. Uh, and even if I mention Volkswagen, Continental, and Sennheiser and uh, some other kind of, um, um, enterprises, Hanover is not really, to be honest, the buzz to be if you want to be um, an, an engineer because uh, the majority of the graduates, uh, they head to the south of Germany because there you have much more companies and much more industrialization. So actually, um, even the, the few number, the small number of people studying um, uh, humanities, uh, they might find a job in Hanover because we have a lot of uh, insurance companies uh, we, uh, and uh, we need lawyers. There are some uh, about 100 um, students uh, from foreign countries studying law in, 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 in Hanover. So I couldn't really answer this question, say we need this, we need that, uh, because you have to look at the whole in Germany. And also, I, mean, I think it's, it's shifting, it's Europe. It's uh, difficult to say it's the border, because people might do their master in Hanover and then, of course, grad do their PhD uh, maybe in the Netherlands, and, and then maybe they start work somewhere else or go back to their country. It's all, on the, it's all moving. So that makes it uh, difficult to hold them, but also um, it, it helps you not to be too selfish and just say, you know, I just want this kind of students. This doesn't work anymore in the world of globalization. But basically, is there a match between the preferences of the international students and the, what Hannover is offering? <sighs> I, I couldn't to answer what it. ratio, let's say. It seems to me that you are doing fine. Yeah, we like everything is <laughs> functioning you know, so well. Sometimes, sometimes I'm wondering if we really have the need of skilled workers because we, sometimes we miss uh, companies like Ericsson. I mean, we have companies taking part in these workshops, but it could be so much more. And sometimes we think, okay, this is always talking about we need skilled workers. Is this really true? Or maybe it's just true for south of Germany. Well, it's not such an urgent pro problem in, in Hanover. Some, somehow we, we manage, and I don't know about uh, complaints of foreign students saying, well, I have no perspective. If they don't have a perspective, well, then they go to Cologne or to Munich uh, because, well, uh, Germany is big enough to, to take them somewhere. All right. So it's not just looking at Hanover, it's more, you know, uh, if we do um, uh, the education, then it is, uh, uh, yeah, giving them the opportunity to learn to, to work in Germany or to work in Europe. That's why I say uh, maybe we have to, to think uh, beyond the borders in this issue more and more. So something that our universities can say, like if you don't find a job in Estonia, you can go to Latvia. <laughs> Is it something that for us, we, I think, we wouldn't, we wouldn't say you it. You wouldn't say first, it, but, but just to compare, in, in Hanover region, we have 1 million 2.2 2 people, which is quite the equivalent to Estonia. So <laughs> maybe that's why yes. we think differently. Yep. Yeah. yep. Hanover is like Estonia, let's say like <laughs> that. No, not so beautiful. Yes. Thanks. We don't have the access to the, uh, to the sea, so we envy you on this point. Thank you. Uh, Mari, uh, any international companies or any famous companies that uh, we, at least as, as Estonians, that we would know about? And the same question to you. How about the match between the preferences and uh, what uh, Tampere has to offer? Yes, well, we have a very long history with Nokia, <laughs> as you know, maybe, and that created us a very big uh, IT pool. 
Uh, that's uh, maybe the uh, one uh, example from the history how this talent pool attracted different kinds of investments and companies later on when you know Microsoft in 2016 uh, made big layouts in Finland. So uh, uh, after that there was a lot of uh, smaller companies uh, which came to the IT sector and also different industrial companies who's, uh, who also uh, they benefited from that talent pool. Let, uh, let me raise for example Cargotech which is uh, building the um, ship, uh, ship uh, uh, construction or things. So, so those big uh, global companies benefited of that talent pool but also uh, smaller companies and startups started to create. And uh, we had a big, um, we have now a big actually ecosystem regarding the imaging and signal processing companies, uh, which is recognized in global level as well. And uh, we found out that now we don't have any more enough, uh, enough uh, professionals who are concentrated on that specific field of work. The companies are coming, small startups are created on that, that specific field, uh, but those talents and professionals are starting to turn around on, on the companies. So we need to influence also on the attraction of the students, international students, uh, who can study those uh, specific fields in our universities, but as well to attract uh, ready talents so that uh, it would stay uh, sustainable, that uh, business ecosystem in Tampere. That's one, one example, for instance. Okay. Katri, what if uh, the students who have graduated from philosophy, semiotics, political sciences, anthropology, film studies, what about them? <laughs> Basically, I, I think that uh, everyone is a talent, meaning that uh, we all have some unique skills which others don't have it. And uh, we, we shouldn't put the, the people in the, in the frames that if you have uh, studied the philosophy and now would like to start to work in, uh, in call center, I little bit doubt that this person is motivated to work in call center, but, but you never know. And, uh, and, uh, and if, if it's uh, or next to the studies you, you would like to work, then for sure we, we are taking uh, all the people who, who or students or, or applicants who are interested to work, they have the right uh, motivation and engagement and uh, also curiosity to do the job. Then I don't think that this uh, field, what you have studied is... Um, is somehow limiting. But of course, uh, studying philosophy, it's quite uh, difficult to be a software developer. But, uh, but being, uh, studying something, uh, something others and uh, being on, on a call center or, or a logistic hub, one of the um, uh, organizers, transport organizers, there, then, then it's uh, absolutely possible. It, it's, it's no limits. And like I said, we believe uh, that uh, everyone, our talent, because we are, we all are, have some uh, unique skills and, and competencies. So basically you're saying that uh, motivation matters. Motivation and attitude. You need to have the right attitude to do the job. That if you are a little bit, you know, arrogant and not interested, just would like to get the things in the box, then for sure it's difficult. But if you have the right attitude and motivation, then this is most important. And ready to learn new skills. Lifelong learning. Lifelong learning, yeah, absolutely. Thanks. My next question would be what we discussed also before, is that the language. Teta, the question to you is that uh, do the students work in English language or in German or something else? The same question for Marie. Like, do the students, how many of them would be working in Finnish and how many in English? And Katri, for you the same question basically. <laughs> Whoever wants to give it. Yeah, well, it's difficult to answer. Actually, we, of course, we also have an increasing number of uh, master study programs in English. Uh, and so then people naturally don't learn German so much. On the other hand, we were really surprised when we were addressed by a Facebook group called um, Enjoy Hanover. 
So what is that? Yeah, it was about 5,000 young people, urban professionals uh, coming from all over the world, working in Hanover and meeting um, for, for leisure time and for getting to, to learn German and to make acquaintance and etc. etc. And so we learned, oh, there are a lot of um, people uh, around younger than 30 years old who work uh, with the English language, uh, with Johnson Controls or Continental. So as um, uh, uh, Katri says, um, you can find a job without speaking German. Nowadays in Hanover, it's possible. Of course, it's easier if you speak German, but actually, language is not that problem in Germany because we have so many international um, companies, but it might be totally different here in Estonia or in the Baltic area. But the typical person working in Continental or in Semmelweis, these are Sennheiser, sorry, Sennheiser. Yeah. They are working in English or in German? Yeah, actually, a lot of them are working in English. Working okay. in English, um, of course, you need German to, uh, to have uh, the, the skills and, and to deal with your colleagues, um, but um, uh, it's not such a barrier if you, if you don't speak German or just German on maybe A, A2 or B1 level, you can, tr uh, you can get a good, very good job if you're perfect in English and if you have the network and if you, yeah, uh, if you have found the, the right company. That's quite possible in, in, uh, in Hanover. That's what we learned uh, from this Facebook group because I think nobody had the statistics about how many young uh, foreigners work in, 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 um, in, in companies in Hanover. And so that was really a surprise that there were about f uh, 5,000 of them. Is the German language uh, learning somehow facilitated by any stakeholder? Is it the Hannover, the city, is it the university, is it the employer, let's I say during is, the studies? I think it's the same like in, in, uh, in your countries, you have to have uh, the B2 level before you are allowed to start uh, to study in, in the normal uh, bachelor uh, program, uh, uh, which is in, in German, and then there is a co quite a high barrier. I don't know how the Chinese manage, because they all come with a certificate, but they can't speak German, but somehow they, they manage to pass the exams, really a miracle. Um, yeah, and then we have just, just a few courses at the university, and to be honest, let's say something critical about the universities, because you are so in harmony here. Um, there, is, there is online stream all over the Estonia, but it's okay, between okay. us. It's between us. I, yeah. I think universities very much look on their, themselves, which is totally okay, but they, you really have to push them to feel responsible what the students are doing after graduation. That's why they are quite reluctant in supporting us with the aliens. And also um, to push them to, 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 to help the students to learn German. There are just some professors who have extra uh, uh, engagement and do buddy programs, study buddy programs and mentorship with uh, people living in Hanover, adopting a Chinese student, uh, getting to learn um, uh, German. So this is very much uh, the, the effort of the city council and of some private people who are very motivated motivated, and the university is a bit reluctant in this field, so we have to push them a bit. So maybe it's the same here. I so right, agree with you. Is it? Is yes. the same with you? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. If I may continue. Yeah, please. Is that I'm so sad to say that actually the only sector uh, uh, in, in Tampere uh, which utilizes constantly English language, but not every company either, uh, is the IT sector. Even the biggest uh, global companies like Kalmar and Valmet, uh, those, are, those are not utilizing uh, English as their working language and they prefer to hire people who have good Finnish skills. So even though that these are in the technical side, uh, these companies, that's a big loss for us that, that these students can't uh, start working with English language. And also the companies, well, the labor market, it's not enough open, as I mentioned earlier. Um, also, the students, they don't realize in the beginning of their studies that they need to have Finnish skills or even to start studying Finnish in, in different ways uh, and network in different ways in order to, to have more uh, flexible choices uh, after their graduation. And this is something that I agree with you totally, that, that our responsible is to push a little bit universities, uh, that they push their students in the beginning of their studies to start learning Finnish. 
because uh, these students, they are young when they start their studies, there are a lot of things going on the first, first year and the second year, they concentrate fully on their studies, hopefully, but they don't realize that it's also a crucial point when they should start learning Finnish and start to network. So uh, uh, universities have a big role there to push them, push them forward. Yeah. All right. Andre? Yes, the language is uh, is really really important and, and one of the key points. But uh, but speaking now a bit uh, selfish and only my my point of view and and our company point of view, then uh, English is absolutely enough. But uh, this doesn't mean that uh, we have uh, all the best English-speaking people there only, that uh, we still have in-house uh, free translators. And all the documents we are translating to uh, free languages. Uh, English is the first one, then it's Estonia, and then it's Russia. And um, we are also arranging ourselves learning classes for, uh, uh, for our foreign uh, employees. And uh, I, I have one, one funny story that uh, when one new employee came uh, and then he said that uh, I was so worried about my English, but now being here, then I feel that everybody are speaking this bad English. <laughs> and uh, then, no, then it, it was like... It's called international English. It's international <laughs> language. Okay. It's, and then we, then we said that this probably is this uh, astonishing or, or something Estonian English mix uh, also with uh, heavy sweet, uh, Swedish... Uh, Influence. So uh, the, the, the dialects are, are extremely different, but most important is that people understand each other. You can always use your hands, and if you have the face-to-face, -face, then, then it's understandable. And also we have the speller, and if you're doing writtenly, everybody understands. So, uh, so the language is really important, and, and I personally, in our company, I haven't noticed that the, the language is an issue. But what I, what I hear when I'm attending some... Uh, other conferences or, or meet with uh, other HR managers for, for many la uh, companies in Estonia, the language is a big problem and, um, uh, and especially when there is this customer, uh, customer uh, services where there is this B2 uh, norm but you need to speak Estonian and, and uh, there is, uh, yeah, uh, like Teda said, that there are students or, or employees who are coming, they have the P2, but uh, basically they don't understand anything. It, it happens also in Estonia that uh, somehow you can learn by heart uh, or, or do somehow the tests, but uh, basically you are not capable to speak. But language is, is an important and key fact for, for foreign students. Before we take the questions from the audience, I have one more question to ask. Uh, let's say, how, how long it's a very simple Quick answer, let's say. How long have you been doing it? It seems that, uh, Hanofer, you have been doing it for a very long time, but anyway, just uh, you as an employer taking the interns, mm -hmm. Maria as a city of Tampere, Teda as a Hanofer. Because well, it's very systematic what you do. Yeah, well, we, very important is um, this year our action plan, and we, uh, pub uh, we put it through the city council in 2016, and since then we are working. Or, or I push the people to still work. You universities, you have to push. I'm a bit bashing today, universities. Sorry for that. But um, yeah, four or five years really intensively, I would say. All right, Marie. Well, as I mentioned, we have been working with this for over a decade with these talent attraction issues, but still somehow uh, and some moments I, I, I'm quite sad to see that, okay, it feels like we are doing peanuts. <laughs> it's, it's not enough. Uh, how can we influence to the labor market that they would be more open to hire internationals? What are the measures that, that we can do? Because there are so many different things that are influencing to the labor market structure. But what I want to emphasize for different cities and stakeholders Holders, as I mentioned, that the collaboration is the key, of course, but is, it's also that we need to see our organization as part of those career paths that internationals uh, are creating to our, our cities or our, our economic uh, systems or ecosystems that we have, have in our cities. Uh, we need to see the structures do we need to change those structures in order to facilitate the, the service path that we offer for the companies who are hiring internationals and for the international students and internationals in general? 
So this is something that we try to uh, work on as a city because we are bringing different parties together, but all the organization need to uh, do structural changes. We have uh, started to work systematically with interns from 2010. Um, and uh, then we started to see uh, every, every year that more and more there are foreign students actually who are coming and, and would like to have the internships done. And uh, like big boom, I would say, uh, started for us uh, 2013 when we uh, established or, or made it uh, here in, in Tallinn, the, um, opened the R&D uh, Research and Development Centre. And uh, then we saw that uh, now we can't uh, without foreign stu students and we need to be even more like focused and, and systematically start to work cooperation with universities. Thank you. Now we would like to have questions, many of them. Because you have in front of you, you have two fantastic local government representatives. You can't ask questions from them every day. And of course, yes, there is. Yes. Question from Sweden. Question from Sweden, yes, uh, Andrea. Um, so a question for Katri, uh, why do you think that not more companies are doing what you're doing and what do you think that public b bodies who wish that the uh, private sector was more active in this uh, should do? What do you think that public bodies should do and why do you think that not more companies are doing what you're doing? I, I, first of all, I don't think that, uh, that we are the only one who is doing it, but uh, I think our scale is uh, a little bit more bigger than other companies because we are one of the biggest companies in Estonia from, from employee side and also from turnover point. Uh, and also uh, from Estonian export value is from our side is uh, almost 10%. Uh, in, in that sense, I think our scale is a little bit uh, more bigger. Uh, I believe that a uh, lot of starts up startups are doing similar things what we are doing. Uh, now the second part, what, uh, please remind me, public sector. Uh, yeah, what, what the, um, the government, the local national government uh, can do uh, mm. or should do. Yeah, uh, this is a uh, hot potato currently in the society, what, uh, what the government should do. But uh, for, from, from my point of view, I think we, we should be more, or the government and, and the Estonian society needs to be more open towards the foreign, uh, foreign students, foreign employees, foreign people at all, meaning when they would like to come to work here. Uh, and, and currently the trick is that we have these quotas and uh, basically uh, already a uh, new year on 2nd of January the quotas are full and, and you can't recruit uh, outside. So 1st of January was the day off but 2nd uh, of January it's full, full already. But uh, for, for ICT uh, cluster this uh, IT and uh, IT environment there we can have exemption and uh, this, this works. But overall, I, I think uh, we need to be, uh, in the society needs to be this understanding that we need to have uh, uh, the foreign workforce, otherwise uh, it, it's not enough employees basically. We are lacking the workforce and otherwise this economical growth is not possible to achieve. And it, it, it's, I, I really mean this because for us, uh, for, for our company, if we can't recruit from foreign, uh, then uh, in overall the company can quite easily decide that, okay, let's move out from Estonia because uh, this and that reasons that we can't be uh, efficient, we can't be flexible, we can't uh, do the things what is required from us to do. So uh, I think, yeah, uh, overall, shortly, uh, we need to be more uh, flexible and uh, uh, let the skilled workforce in to support us, otherwise we can't be successful. I have a question to Katri. 
Yes, of okay. course. If there is um, no, nothing uh, coming in, from the in audience. Hanover, uh, the, the universities are quite fond of um, uh, uh, yeah, bringing together bachelor, master or research thesis uh, of students with companies. Mm -hmm. And often this is the first step of a foreign student then also to stay within the companies. Do you work closely together with universities uh, in bachelor, master thesis? Yes, especially in, in master thesis that um, uh, by heart, uh, I, I might say a little bit wrong numbers, but overall the scale is so that uh, uh, interns who are coming, then uh, like 15 or 20 percent of interns are writing their master thesis work uh, also uh, based on, on the company. Yeah. They, they are doing some study or, or some uh, research and uh, then in, in this their study field they are writing the thesis work, so mm. they, they are engaged in that sense mm -hmm. as well. Yes, there is two questions, one from here and the other one from back there. But yes, first. Yes, thank you. Well, uh, a question uh, from the Netherlands. Uh, most non-EU students uh, who come to the Netherlands uh, are from China. And they are the most difficult group to integrate in the university society, in the civil society, in the labor market and almost all of them uh, return after graduation directly to, to China. They do not want to stay in the Netherlands. Um, well, my question is, do you recognize this picture about uh, Chinese students and how do you deal with it? Thank you. Yeah, as I mentioned, we sometimes wonder how, where they get their uh, certification for B2, uh, because when they come, uh, the knowledge of German is very limited. Uh, they stick to themselves, and then the German gets even worse. Uh, and uh, actually, all these buddy uh, programs mostly focus on the Chinese students. It's very difficult. Personally, I, I know a, a couple who was uh, very integrated, and then they built a family, and uh, they stayed in Hanover for a long time. Um, so there are exceptions, <laughs> which I know personally, but nevertheless, we have 1,000. Um, among the 7,000 foreign students in Hanover is the group of the Chinese students with 1,000, really a very big majority, and it's, it's difficult, yeah, and you can't help it if they go back. And I mean, to be honest, we didn't talk about how many of them stopped their studies. I was surprised to, to hear about one of um, the, the, the persons uh, quoting that you only have 9% of, uh, I think, foreign students in Estonia uh, stopping their studies here? Yes. Someone said yes. it. Yes. Well, actually, in Germany, it's, I think, nearly the half or 40 percent who, who so stop and to, don't go to graduation. Nobody's talking in about Germany it. In, in Germany or in Hannover? No, in Germany. Really? In Germany. I just have German uh, figures okay. because the universities would never give you the original figures. Very difficult to get them. So it was a survey. It was a survey. And nobody really talks about it. But that's the difficulty. And then we say, well, people are much more successful with their studies if you help them learning German and this is um, a, a challenge for the un first for the universities because they want them also to, to finish successfully and secondly uh, for the city to, to supply more resources in this field. Right. I don't have the numbers of how many Chinese students do we have in our university, but I know on the Finnish level that we have about 12,000 uh, Chinese speakers in Finland in total. And actually, I know as well that they are quite heavily concentrated in the capital area, especially in Espoo, which is like the second city uh, in Finland. So, so we can see that the community attracts uh, other Chinese from other parts of Finland or uh, from uh, outside of Finland. Finland to Espo, uh, so we can't make any any conclusions uh, in 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 the city of Tampere how well they are integrating or or are they different from other other groups of migrants, unfortunately. Katri, do you have a Chinese graduate? <laughs> Actually, uh, this is the the. Only, only country among those 47 that we don't have Chinese, <laughs> and uh, and I, I was thinking that why, why probably, but uh, probably, probably we don't have uh, because uh, our biggest competitor is Huawei, who is uh, Chinese, and uh, and uh, if they, I know that there is a lot of Chinese students in Estonia as well, but uh, somehow they uh, don't apply for Ericsson. All right, we had one question back there, yes. Um, 
my question is linked to uh, uh, what we um, heard in the first half of the day. Um, based on what uh, the, the way that Estonia has um, uh, changed, or I mean, everything has developed in the sense that uh, in the last 10 years, our numbers have uh, grown rapidly. Um, still, in comparison to uh, the Netherlands, uh, Sweden, Finland, and, and Germany, our numbers are quite small. So it would be very interesting for me, to, and, and it seems to me also that the, the, the problems that we're discussing when we speak about the Estonian um, uh, side, then the, quotes are, uh, the quotas are usually uh, limiting, even though uh, it, when we speak about Germany, uh, you were saying that there's a constant increase um, in the needs of, of, of people that you're expecting to have in, in the country. So I, I, my point is that I feel like everything is, com we're talking from completely different angles. Uh, I'm interested to hear from, from, from uh, both um, uh, uh, the, the German and the Finnish experience. How do you feel Estonia is moving? Um, uh, uh, I mean, how, how do you see our development based on your long experience? Because it seems to me that uh, we've done a lot, but, um, but based on what you are all saying, I mean, there's still more to do. So how far are we from, you know, achieving what we should be achieving? Can I answer to that? Since, since I have been quite jealous for my uh, Estonian colleagues, how <laughs> fast and rapid they are to move forward when they decided to have an international house, they build it in a few months and so <laughs> forth. So, so we, that's much more longer period for us to take those kind of actions. That shows how flexible is the Estonian society and also the collaboration. Um, and also from the international point of uh, international talent point of view, uh, I have noticed that, for instance, uh, of course, Finland offers a lot of opportunities for IT sector, IT talents. Uh, but for internationals, it's much more difficult to create uh, create their uh, career paths to the top senior level uh, in the IT sector. And Estonians, uh, in Estonia, it's more easy to, to climb on the junior level to the, to the senior level in, uh, in a uh, smaller period of time. So, so I would conclude that the, the society and the work market is more flexible uh, for internationals to create those career paths. And that, that's your benefit, actually. That's your benefit, because uh, even though that our salaries are are bigger than in Estonia, we can't offer that kind of uh, maybe forecast for the, for the uh, internationals. Uh, here I can comment towards the salaries, why the growth is so rapid, because otherwise they will go to Finland. <laughs> and, you know, then, then you need to like, uh, let the software developers to grow fast and, and offer the senior level position, which is quite equal nowadays with the salaries from, from Finland. Yeah, I would totally agree. Uh, I mean, Finland and Germany, we are much, a much more powerful economic uh, country and more people, plenty of people. Uh, but uh, you have one very big privilege. I mean, you're avant-garde. When I told uh, my colleagues I'm going to Estonia, guess what they all said? <gasps> you are going to the paradise of digitalization and tell us how it is in, in Estonia. Well, I haven't seen much in this conference hall, but tomorrow I will, you know, make my day experience with your digital so that's really, uh, your asset is you're small, you're quickly, and you have less problems in certain fields than countries like we have. So go for it, and yeah, you're the avant-garde in many fields. And I think that when it comes to, yes, Anneli, but I, when it comes to proportions, then Finland is having 20,000 international degree students, roughly, right? So it was something like this. We have 5,000 mm -hmm. and Finland is at least four times bigger than we are. So when it comes to proportions, I think That's we are doing point. more or less on the same level. Mm -hmm. But uh, yes, we had a question from, yes, Anneli. Good afternoon, Anneli Donk, head of the International House of Estonia. So thank you at first, Mari, uh, for the lovely comment about the house. The house itself got four months old uh, just uh, Tuesday. 
it was really, I more had just a comment, not a question. It was really inspiring to, to hear all of you. Um, definitely we're going to have a discussion with Katri <laughs> about the cooperation. But it was really inspiring to hear from Tida and from Mari what, what you have been doing for the talent attraction because uh, uh, we again in Estonia, we have a lot to learn from you, what, what you have been doing. Any other comments? Ah, Marion? Um, it's kind of not a very good question, but have there been any drawbacks in engaging with, uh, with foreign students this far that we could perhaps avoid? Yeah, maybe I could have the last slide, I promised. Uh, the, the drawback just happened two weeks ago. You know, I, I, I told you about um, the, the workshops, um, the, um, uh, the Hanover Employment Agency hand was offering, and uh, they were really devastated because only 20 students came. And uh, that is a drawback because it shows um, it doesn't just uh, we help uh, um, posting something on Facebook and um, putting something on the pin wall in the universities. You really have to know the, the international communities and you have to know them face to face. And also the companies. Um, I mean, I, I quoted some companies involving, but Hanover has so much more companies who are not really up to this issue. So, so that's the drawback uh, that if we do the measures, then sometimes people don't come and you took so so much energy in and then you just wonder why didn't they come was it the wrong date or maybe we just don't know them and since yeah you have to be very quickly the, the communities change every uh, three or four year totally different people study and it's uh, difficult for us to to run behind and and to get them so that's a drawback sometimes even with all our good measures we have and um, therefore I would say um, the most important is to, to, to have regularly welcome activities what we have at the, with the city hall the Lord Mayor every second year invites about 100 international students and we try to get to know them personally and that is really what counts even if you are a city of half a million um, it's uh, the, the personal attitude and that will help to, to retain um, international students in Hanover on the, on the previous presentations, there was mentioned that uh, Estonia has this welcoming program. And uh, well, I'm not sure how it engages the international students after their graduations, but that's a huge problem in Finland that after the three years of, of studies, uh, the international students don't have a right to, to uh, be involved with the, our national integration program. The national integration program for international starts uh, when they come to the country and it lasts three years. And uh, that includes Finnish studies, for instance, for unemployed uh, people. Uh, so uh, after the graduation of the, of the international students, they have passed the three years and they are no longer involved with this, these benefits that come with the integration program. And that's a huge loss because they end up with <laughs> not having uh, Finnish skills and uh, not having uh, very good uh, services that uh, the employment sector could offer for them. So that's something that I think Estonian can, can learn from and we try also a lot to influence on the, on the legal matters on this, this side. Yeah, how, how, to, how to comment this? Uh, I, I, um, I don't think that there is some big issues with, with foreign students because, uh, uh, yeah, local, local people also uh, time to time forget to watch the, watch the clock and then they, they are a little bit late. Uh, maybe the, the, it, it, the cultural background influences time to time that if, if the they should be somewhere eight o'clock. They will be eight thirty there or something. But, but this happens also with local ones. Uh, but one one thing from legal cases, what we lately had was that one. Uh 
uh, one student who made first the internship then started to work for us and uh, he was so uh, smart, clever and, and really good uh, student that uh, finished earlier than this nominal time was or, or how you say this in English and uh, graduated one year earlier and then Estonian government uh, decided to cancel then this uh, work and studying permit because uh, it was given for the study period but uh, he was a little bit too fast and you know then we needed to start to apply again. This was little, little, one hole on the, on the legal system. So uh, th th there happens time to time these in interesting things. But uh, basically, this person got punished because he was too clever and smart. Sometimes it happens. It happens. It, yes. 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 <laughs> I have the, I will take because it's one hour basically has gone so quickly. I have the last question to you. It's mo yeah, for all of you, but mostly to uh, Teta and Marie. Uh, what would be your main recommendations for our local government in Estonia? Mostly the city of Tallinn and Tartu, but also why not the others? Uh, they are doing bits and pieces here and there about student retention, but what would be your recommendation how to systematically approach the student retention topic out of the university to the labour market? Um, Some yeah. tips. Well, my, my tip would be um, to gather around all uh, different actors and to really build a sustainable network. We call it uh, Hanover Skilled Workers Alliance. And yeah, include lots of uh, di different stakeholders and uh, d d decide on objectives and then uh, give yourself a time of three years um, to uh, develop uh, measures and to bring them into action. That would be my suggestion. Thanks. Marie. I think the international students bring growth and internationalization for the companies. So I think that's the message that you should send also to your local companies, that you are not uh, only uh, employing international students or giving their work position, but you are creating a new international atmosphere for the company, and maybe that this will enable uh, your company to go uh, to other markets. This is something that the local governments should say to the local companies. Absolutely. Right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Katri? Yeah, just uh, learn the languages and uh, let's, uh, let's be happy and, uh, and more open. That's, that's my comment. Thank you. All right. So this was our short panel. I got uh, many keywords here that I wrote down during, uh, during your speeches. Basically, the keywords would be acceptance, motivation scheme for all the stakeholders, um, to find out, let's say, about the students, why do they leave, even though they might have very good job positions in the country or in the city, and uh, to start working systematically and to get everybody behind the same table and to start discussing. These were the my keywords, but otherwise, I'm saying a very big thanks to you. Let's make one big applause for the presenters. Thank you so much. I have uh, one request. I brought some uh, leaflets with me, which I don't want to take back on the plane. <laughs> it's about studying research in Hanover, and I put it outside on the table, so be free to take it with you. And you are here with us until the end of the conference yes. anyway. So okay. Teda is all yours.